Hi, it's Lou from Christian Faith and Fiction and these are the best books that I read in 2023. These are all Christian fiction books that I've given five stars to on Goodreads. They are in uh, various genres and I'm going to separate them out into those genres for you. I think it was Catherine from Read Journal Love that suggested that I should do my own awards, unofficial awards, so I have made a little graphic -y thing to go with these uh, books. So if you're an author who's on this list, you have won the opportunity to be on this list and uh, a little uh, photo with this picture attached to it will be on my Instagram. So give yourself a pat on the back, do a little woohoo dance if you feel like it. And I just wanna say thank you for writing some really great books that I have read last year. I'm gonna give you a short sort of overview of what the book is about and what I liked about it. But if you want to see my full book reviews, I'll leave them linked in the description below. So as I said, I'm gonna separate these into different genres. So uh, in Mystery and Suspense, I didn't really read any five star books. Uh, there is one that fits more into the contemporary romance that had some suspense in it, but we will skip over that genre. So first up is The Words We Lost by Nicole Deese, which I read earlier in the year and I read it on for NetGalley, uh, so I don't have a physical copy, but it's here. And I gave it a story enjoyment rating of 10 out of 10 and Christian faith rating of 2 out of 3. This book follows Ingrid, who is a uh, editor at a publishing house, and sadly her best friend Cece, uh, a writer called Cece, she has passed away. Ingrid had helped Cece to publish four books in a fantasy series, but the final book was missing and um, she passed away and so they haven't got this final book. Ingrid's boss tells her that she has to find the book or she's going to lose her job, basically. In order to find it, she has to return back to the place where um, she was younger, growing up, and it's a place she doesn't want to go, she's been hiding from and face up to the emotions and the people that she has um, not been wanting to face since Cece's death. This is a romance, but it also has a, like a whole emotional roller coaster of other things going on with grief and loss and uh, things that go on through the past. And it really goes into her inner journey that she's going through throughout the book. What I loved about it was sort of the whole thing, not just the sort of romantic elements, but the whole kind of character progression. And yeah, it was not a light contemporary by any means because of the, the material it's covering, but it was very sort of in depth and I enjoyed it a lot. The next contemporary romance that I gave five stars to was also by Nicole Deese and it is All That Really Matters. And this one is following Molly, who is like a, an influencer and she gets the opportunity to audition for a TV program. And, but in order to do that, she has to get some uh, vol volunteer and get some experience working with underprivileged young people. So she volunteers to work at this program. Uh, but the manager there, Silas, is not impressed with her at all when she turns up. This is following her sort of emotional journey as well as a spiritual journey throughout the book and how she kind of grows and learns things as a person through what she's um, doing through the volunteering. I love I love that it has like humour as well as a real depth of emotion to it. And it's also following the relationship between Molly and Silas as they get to know each other and find out a bit more about each other. Molly has drifted away from God at the beginning, so the, her faith journey is a significant part of the plot. And then in December, I read Better Watch Out by Natalie Walters. This is contemporary romance with a side order of suspense. So there's a bit more um, mystery, well, more suspense in this mix, mixing it up. This following Franny, who is going to New York to meet her long distance boyfriend and surprise him over this sort of Christmas period. It's well, before Christmas in December. And she has a whole bucket list of things she wants to do in sort of Christmassy things to do in New York while she's there with him. But when she gets there, she 
discovers that he is not interested in her anymore. He says he's moved on and um, she is left there in New York on her own. Her brother is very um, security conscious. He's part of some, he's part of the FBI or something. <laughs> and so he hires somebody to take her to the airport so that she will be safe. In the meantime, she um, gets mixed up in this kind of suspense plot because the, per the person that's hired to take her to the airport is also supposed to be protecting a millionaire and his daughter. So there's all a mixture as a misunderstanding and there's a mixture of the romance there. Uh, the relationship between Franny and Andrew kind of develops as the book goes through and also there's that element of danger going on as well. And that I really appreciated that. I love contemporary romance that has a little bit extra in the subplots just to make it a bit more interesting for me. Um, yeah, I love that type of contemporary romance. So this one I gave 10 out of 10 for story enjoyment rating and two out of three for Christian faith rating. You could tell that the um, characters were Christians and there was some faith content in there. In the fantasy and sci-fi genre, I read at the beginning of last year, I read The Architect by Jonathan Starrett. And this is middle grade, young adult. I think it's middle grade. Um, it is set in Phantom City, which is a bit like Gotham City, but with Zeppelins. And it, it feels to me like a kind of 1920s, 1930s New York feel. Not that I ever was alive then or went there, but that kind of feel you get from um, films, movies. It is following Charlie, who has always been told that the Zeppelins are dangerous. So whenever you see one, you need to get inside. However, when she encounters one, she sees a bright light and that changes everything for her. She starts questioning what is really going on in the world and who the mysterious architect is. I thought it was really fun. I thought it had plenty of Christian parallels in there. I don't know if there's going to be another book to it, but I hope so. It was a good, um, good fun read. The mix of genres took me a while to get used to. The book is quite quirky in its like characters as well as its plot and uh, setting the world. I especially liked the sort of allegory that was a part of this story. So I gave The Architect 9 out of 10 for story enjoyment rating and 2 out of 3 for Christian faith rating. I read North or Be Eaten by Andrew Peterson, which is book 2 in the Wingfeather saga. This is such a fun um, story, such a fun saga. It is also middle grade as well, Christian middle grade. We get to see a lot more of the world in this one, see more of what's going on. The story kind of expands quite a bit and the, as they're sort of moving around. They're still following the Igibi, Igibi? Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, children and their family um, carrying on from book one. They're still same sort of dangers but also added monsters and very creative things going on. A lot of humour in there as well. Um, I particularly enjoyed that and there is some faith uh, allegories in there as well. I felt like as I was reading it that the faith content was actually stronger in this book than the first book. I gave it 10 out of 10 for story enjoyment rating and 2 out of 3 for Christian faith rating. I started the uh, Weaver trilogy which is The Story Peddler by Lindsay A. Franklin, that's book one, and really enjoyed this one as well. It is set in a kind of medieval type world and the magic is a gifted magic, I would say. A bit like some superhero magic where somebody has a, a special power, a special gift, and they have to learn to use it. It's following Tanwin, who is training to be a story peddler, and when she tells stories, coloured threads come out and swirl around and entertain the crowds and then crystallise into um, something, a statue sort of thing, which the peddlers then sell. So in this kingdom, the only stories that are allowed are the ones that the king has said can be told. But Tanwin finds that um, things start to slip out that sh shouldn't when she's telling stories. This puts her in danger and sort of starts her off on an adventure, finding out more about the world and her gifting. 
it is told from Tamwin's perspective mostly, but you do get to see a lot of other characters as well. And I enjoyed the sort of fantastic fantastical fantasy elements of the story. I enjoyed all these sort of intrigues and the adventure and the plot that went with it. Um, I also enjoyed that there was a faith kind of element to it. I gave it a story enjoyment rating of 9 out of 10 and a Christian faith rating of 3 out of 3. And then nearer to the end of the year I read Dream of Kings by Sharon Hink. It is a retelling of Joseph from Genesis and it is the Joseph character is played by Jo Lan, who is a dream teller. She lives in a colder kind of kingdom where she is a respected dream teller and people come to her with their dreams or they come to her and they can't remember their dreams but she's able to tell them and tell them what they might mean. She is given a privileged position in the court there but other people don't like it and she is taken prisoner and sold as a slave into this other kingdom sent all the way down there where she is sold as a slave. As I said the story kind of follows that Joseph story most of the way through. There's a few places where it goes into its own story as well but I really enjoyed it. I loved the romance in it. I liked the um, gifting in it. I liked how it fitted in so well with the biblical story as well and helped me to really understand what it would have been like for Joseph through seeing this totally fantasy story um, unfold. I gave it a story enjoyment rating of 9 out of 10 and a faith, Christian faith rating of 3 out of 3. Then we have Counted with the Stars by Connie Lynn Cossette. This is a biblical fiction book and it is I could say historical fiction set during biblical times. It is set during the time of the Exodus and I love the way that it follows ordinary people through an extraordinary time in history. The story follows Kaya who is an Egyptian who is sold to slavery by her father to pay off a debt. She ends up working with a Hebrew slave who tells her about the Lord and introduces Kaya to this other slave's brother. This story takes us through the whole of the plagues in Egypt as well as going out into the desert. It has a lot of drama, there's romance, there's friendship and I really enjoyed that as well as her journey into faith which is a big part of the story. I gave it 9 out of 10 for story enjoyment rating and 3 out of 3 for Christian faith rating. So then in historical fiction I have quite a few five star reads this last year. The first one was Set the Stars Alight by Amanda Dykes. This is a dual time period um, novel set in the contemporary era and in the 1800s. So in the present day we start with Lucy as a girl living with her clockmaker father in London. She makes friends with Dash who is a bit of a loner. The story then picks up again when they are adults and Lucy is really interested in a ship called the Jubilee. So the present day story is following the friendship and as it, between Lucy and Dash and how that sort of develops and the mystery surrounding the Jubilee ship and how she tries to find out more about it. And then in the past it is set during the Napoleonic Wars and following Frederick and his story that also um, combines with ships and the sea. What I loved about this book was the, uh, the writing. It was beautiful, it was poetic and had a kind of emotional subtext which I really enjoyed reading. I loved all the Christian elements and the allegory that was in here. Um, just enjoyed that. It's not a quick read, it's a sort of slow read that you have because of the style of writing you have to really slow down and, and um, read it slowly but uh, yeah I just I enjoyed the writing a lot. I think this might be my favourite so far by Amanda Dykes that I've read. I gave it a story enjoyment rating of 10 out of 10 and a Christian faith rating of 3 out of 3. Also from NetGalley I read Codename Edelweiss by Stephanie Lansom. This is a Christian historical mystery and suspense with, with some romance in it. It is set in Los Angeles just before the Second World War. 
the book follows Liesel, who is a German-American working in Hollywood. She is offered a job by a Jewish lawyer to spy on people in her community who might have sympathies with the Nazis. I enjoyed the fast pace of this book and the mysteries and the uh, hidden secrets and the family dynamics going on. Several of the characters were either Christian or Jewish, so faith did play a part in this book. I gave it story enjoyment rating of 9 out of 10 and a Christian faith rating of 3 out of 3. Again, from NetGalley, I read The Metropolitan Affair by Jocelyn Green. This is a Christian historical romance, mystery and suspense book. The story follows Dr Lauren Westlake, who is an Egyptologist working at the Metropolitan Museum in New York in 1925. She had a difficult relationship with her father growing up, but she always wanted to go to Egypt with him. At the beginning of the book, Lauren's father gives her an opportunity to go on an expedition with him, but she has to prove herself to the board of his newly formed society. At the same time, she's also met up with Joe, who is an old friend and who works for um, as a detective in the NYPD. And he asks her to help him find some Egyptian forgeries which are being sold amongst the uh, New York's wealthy people. I loved some of the emotional complications in this book, as well as the mystery. Um, some of it I predicted and some I didn't. There were just a few references to the Christian faith in this book, um, but those were strong where they were. I gave this story enjoyment rating of 9 out of 10 and Christian faith rating of 2 out of 3. I read The Golden Braid by Melanie Dickerson. This is one of her Hagenheim series and it's a, re a retelling of Rapunzel. It is young adult um, medieval Christian fiction. It takes place at the same time as the previous book in the series, The Princess Spy, so definitely read that one first before you read this one. And it is following Rapunzel, who lives with her mother, and her mother is overly protective of her, doesn't want her to meet with boys or anything. When a young man shows interest in her, her mum takes her away to Hagenheim. On their way, they are attacked, and a knight called Garrick comes to rescue them, but then Rapunzel, Rapunzel ends up having to rescue him. She wants someone to teach her to read, but is forced to do so secretly, so they are meeting sort of clandestinely um, and it is about their sort of friendship developing into relationship there's romance in there there's obviously following the sort of Rapunzel theme so it follows that loosely follows that kind of story um, with the overprotective mother and things that go on from that I really enjoyed seeing the same story from the princess spy in a different character seeing what was happening with them at the time uh, the story was had good action and pacing and um, I enjoyed it all the way through. Faith content played a large part in this book so I give it a story enjoyment rating of 9.5 out of 10 and a faith rating of 3 out of 3. Finding Lady Enderly by Joanna Davison Politano was another book I loved and this is a um, historical fiction Christian there's some mystery involved in it as well. Starts off in London in 1871. It follows Raina, who is a rag woman in London. One day she receives an offer to leave London and go to the country to live in the country house and pretend to be Lady Enderley while she is away. Raina has to pretend to be the Countess, but she soon finds when she gets there that not everything is as it seems. So there is a great mystery about what's happening to Lady Enderley, why has she been asked to step in, and who is behind it all. There was a lot of character development in there, there was a historical mystery, there was romance, and Raina is really wrestling with her own identity. She also goes on a spiritual journey as well as a romantic one. So I gave this book a story enjoyment of 9 out of 10 and a Christian faith rating of 3 out of 3. Then I listened to the audiobook of Prince of Spies by Elizabeth Camden. This is the third book in the Hope and Glory series, so it's a continuing story. Um, each one has its own sort of 
story within but there's a continuing story that carries on throughout the three books so not a huge amount I can say about the story of this one. It is set in Washington DC in 1902. It is following two main characters from two different families who are at war with each other. There is a kind of Romeo and Juliet kind of romance going on there as well as a conflict surrounding the families and also the story that's continuing on from the other two books. This was my favourite one of the uh, of the series. I think I gave four stars to the other two books, but you definitely need to read the whole series in order to read this one. I gave it a story enjoyment rating of 10 out of 10 and a Christian faith rating of 2 out of 3. The next five stars I gave to The Cairo Curse by Pepper Basham. You might notice there's a bit of a theme with these historical, I really like historical romantic mysteries. This is book two in the Freddie and Grace mystery series. The first book sees them sort of getting together. This one, they are um, newly married on their way to their honeymoon. It is set in 1914 and they travel out to Egypt um, where there is a, a dig going on that has members of the family are related to. So they stop off to visit Frederick's cousin who is um, married to a man who runs the archaeological dig. They meet the team there. We meet some new characters in this book which I haven't met before in the previous book and there is a mystery that takes place and they're trying to solve. Um, I love their characters. I, they're very sort of... they've got a lot of um, personality and uh, very sparky. I loved Grace's quirky nature and her love of books. The mystery was good, lots of clues and suspense. There is a bit of a slow burner kind of builds up through the first half of the book. The their romance is still a little bit spicy in this one, uh, because they're a married newly married couple. Um things take place off the page but are sort of referred to quite a bit, their desire and things like that. Um however, it is they are married, so you know it's moral but I think there was less in this book than in the previous book so um, I gave this one 9 out of 10 story enjoyment rating and 2 out of 3 for Christian faith rating. The final two books are both by the same author so uh, in the autumn sort of time I read Fairest of Heart by Karen Whitmire. This is a Snow White retelling western style. Um, it is set in Texas in 1892 and this is right up there with some of my favourite fairy tale retellings. It follows Penelope Snow who takes the job as a maid to a famous actress as she tours the country. One day Penelope is left for dead in the woods, I won't say why, um, but she is taken in by seven men who are working their ranch, who live in the ranch there. The other main character is Titus who is a Texas ranger who is trying to track down the theft of some things that have been going missing across the count across the state. This isn't my normal setting of a book, it's what, not what I would normally be drawn to but I love the sweet romance, I love these characters, um, I love the t retelling of the, the story and how it, they, um, she managed to sort of fit it in with that story. There was a Christian faith content sprinkled throughout the book which I appreciated as well. So I gave this a story enjoyment rating of 9 out of 10 and a Christian faith rating of 3 out of 3. And finally in December I read A Texas Christmas Carol by Karen Wittemeyer and this is a retelling of A Christmas Carol set in Texas in 1895. It's following Felicity who puts together baskets to give out to the poor and she determines to get the help of the wealthiest man in the area who is um, doesn't want to have anything to do with anybody. He's very obsessed with business and making money, doesn't want to see people or let people into his life. She is very stubborn and won't take no for an answer and just keeps on trying to get him to get involved. I really loved Felicity's tenacity and her stubbornness and her um, love of people as well and I loved the references to um, Dickens' Christmas Carol. Their romance was cute and Evan's development as a character, his sort of redemption story as you will, uh, was good to see. It's quite a short book so don't take you, won't take you very long to read that one. And there's definitely Christian faith content in this book so I gave it story enjoyment rating of 9 out of 10 and a Christian faith rating of 3 out of 3. 
So I think I make that 17 books, 17 five-star books in 2023 read. I think that's a pretty good year. All of those books I think I could put onto my list of books that I might like to reread at some point in the future. Again, thank you to the authors who have written those books that I've enjoyed. I do appreciate what you're doing and your hard work. Let me know if you've read any of those books and what you thought of them and also what was your favourite book of the year that you read last year. If you're not already subscribed to my channel please do go ahead and click subscribe and if you'd like to see more videos on Christian fiction books then you can watch this video here. Okay I pray that God bless you this week and until next time.